Welcome back, and we're going to use um, something today that is quite often used in real life, and that is trying to figure out what are we going to do with decimals um, estimating. So if you have to find out a decimal and you need to multiply or divide it, sometimes it's just helpful to find an approximate answer or just to write about the right answer so that you can move on. Um, so for example, Judy needs 0 0.75 meters of hemp to make a hemp necklace and she wants to make 20 necklaces to sell at the craft fair well about how much hemp does Judy need to all together okay and we're gonna learn about something called decimal bookmarks to help her estimate or help us estimate if we need and so in this situation even though if we don't have the exact answer she can still buy just about the right answer and just cut off some right so I'd like you to try this out, and I'm not going to go over the answer, but I want you to just experiment. So let's pretend, well, it might, maybe it's a true fact, but a nickel has a mass of 3.95 grams. And if I asked you what is the approximate mass of seven nickels, what would you do to estimate your answer? As well, nine bags of dog food have a mass of 134.55 kilograms. That's all together, nine dog bags, nine <laughs> bags of dog food. What is the approximate mass of one bag? So you know the total now, but what is one bag? What are you going to do in each of these situations? Take a few minutes, try, try and figure out what do you think about is the right answer. We don't need the exact answer, but about. Okay, let's, let's try some out. So let's have a little story here. A ping pong ball has a mass of 2.73 grams. I'm not sure if you've ever picked one up. They're pretty light. So we're going to try and estimate the mass of eight ping pong balls. Now I'm going to show you two strategies we can use to solve this problem. And I just want to stop here and remind you that estimating does not mean exact. It means a good approximate answer. So when you see words like estimate, approximate, or about, you're not required to find the exact answer. You're just supposed to find a very good answer. So our first strategy we're going to use, and we're going to be multiplying here, is to use something called front-end estimation. And front-end estimation, we just look at the front number, and we're looking at the whole number there, and that is 2.73. We're going to write that as 2. And we can multiply 2 times 8, because there's 8 ping pong balls, and the answer is 16. So we can say that the mass of 8 ping pong balls is about 16 grams. But we, this is called an underestimate because... 2 is less than 2.73, so um, it's not going to get us, it's going to be under what we the real answer is um, if we were to actually find out the answer. Okay, well what, let's go back to our problem here. Let's use something called de decimal benchmarks. And since we're saying 2.73 is closer to 3 than 2, we can just use that as the number 3. And so we can multiply 3 times 8, and that equals 24. So we're saying the mass of, ping, of the ping pong balls is about 24 grams, and we call this an overestimate because 3 is greater than 2.73. Okay. And I did a little num uh, number line there, and you can see that 2.73 is indeed closer to 3. Okay, you try this one. So here in the story here, the food bank has donated 50 large cans of soup. Each can of soup has a mass of 1.53 kilograms, how much is the mass of all the soup? Let's use front-end estimation or a decimal benchmark. So either of the two strategies I showed you, try it out. Okay, so if we're doing the front-end estimation, 1.53, we're going to re change that to a 1. So we're going to do 50 times 1 equals 50 kilograms. That is an underestimate because we reduced it. But if we do um, decimal benchmarks, well, 1.53, that's closer to 2, technically. We round it up, so we could say 50 times 2 equals 100 kilograms. But in this situation, we have an overestimate, okay? So the number, the actual exact answer, will be somewhere between 50 and 100 kilograms. 
Okay, let's talk about division here. So four baseballs have a total mass of 575.94 grams. Let's try and figure out the estimate of one baseball. So again, two strategies, and we're gonna use front end rounding again. So we're gonna look at that uh, 575.94, and we're gonna reduce, make it to 500. And we can divide that by four, so it's about 125. So we're saying the mass of one baseball is about 125 grams. And we, again, this is an underestimate because 500 is less than 575.94. Well, there's another strategy and that's called using compatible numbers. And so using compatible numbers is numbers we can just change, change the number to something that we know we can work with a little bit easier. They're more compatible, okay? We can do it in our heads a little bit easier. So let's, because that number is really close to 600, I know I can divide 600 divided by four and that's 150. So we're gonna say that the mass of one baseball is about 150 grams. And this is an overestimate because 600 is greater than 575.94. All right, you try. And this is an insp inspired by uh, Valentine's Day that was just happened recently. So Richard has a crush on Greta and wants to ask her to the Valentine's dance. He knows that Greta loves M&Ms. He would like to invite her to the dance by writing it out in M&Ms. Each M&M has a length of 4.7 millimeters. Richard's plan requires 682 millimeters of M&Ms. How many M&Ms does Richard need to make his invitation? I'm gonna get you to pause there, figure this out because you never know, this might happen to you. All right, so we can do front end rounding and we can do compatible numbers. So let's, um, let's change the 682, let's do the front end rounding and let's put that down to 600, okay? And let's take that 4.7 and let's use front end um, rounding and change it to four. Well, we've seen this one already, 600 divided by four is 150. So we can say he needs about 150 M&Ms to make his invitation. Now this is an underestimate, possibly because we are reducing the numbers, okay? Now we could use compatible numbers. I'll divide this up here. Um, well, 700 is a better compatible number for 682. And so 4.7, well, we can change that to five. That's a little bit more compatible. So we could do 700 divided by Five. Um, I know 70 divided by 5 is 14, and I just need to add a zero. So he needs about 140 M&Ms. And so the exact answer is going to be somewhere in between these two amounts. So it's probably best for him to get 150 because he doesn't want to run out. You never know, Greta might not go out with him just because he ran out of M&Ms. All right, so you can see here, this is a life problem. So just a reminder again, in life, math happens. Take care.